welcome to Pekisa for the second look at our coverage of the penultimate round of the Midas Historic Tour. With hot temperatures and strong winds, the conditions would prove to be challenging. History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport, Gumtree, Mitsubishi Electric and their associate sponsors. Pekisa is all about big flowing corners. Peter Jenkins tells us more. We're at Pekisa in Valkum in the Free State. I'm standing at Turn 9, which is the corner at the end of a very, very long straight. Almost all the cars will be in fifth gear coming down here at anything ranging from 180, 190 kilometers an hour up to even 230, 240 kilometers an hour. It's a very, very fast corner and it's followed up by another corner straight after that, all part of the same complex. The smaller cars are going to be able to take this corner flat out, going up to the second part of Turn 9. The faster cars probably won't be able to do that, and it'll either be a slight lift off or a dab on the brakes that doesn't settle the car, which creates a problem later on in the corner. We've just come into the start of Turn 9. This will be the apex roundabout here. You're carrying this speed, and the idea is to keep your foot flat on the accelerator all the way down to the second part. You'll be scrubbing speed off the car, which will naturally slow the car down before going into the second part. You're looking at the entrance into the corner on the far left-hand side. You can see from the tire marks the kind of angles that you take into the corner. And you're coming in here after the first part, having scrubbed off the speed that you need to scrub off. You might need to dab on the brakes. I'd imagine most guys don't. Down a gear, and going hard through the corner. In terms of overtaking, it's probably not a wise part of the track to overtake because you're carrying so much speed, but we have seen some very, very brave souls trying to overtake somebody coming into this section of the track. The reason why they're trying to do that is a very tight corner after this, and if you can get in front of them before that, you'll be in front of them all the way back past the pits. If you're looking for an affordable, fun way to get into racing, Mark Cars is the answer. Road legal cars that you can drive to the track and then race. Well, today's uh, qualifying didn't go as well as what I had expected. I was doing better uh, times in my practices yesterday, uh, but luckily it's a handicapped uh, format, so I'm going to nominate a time that I think I can achieve today. I was doing about four seconds slower this morning than what I was yesterday. It could be the tire temperature. This morning uh, there was a little bit of a breeze. It was a little bit cooler, but I, I was actually not expecting that uh, four second uh, difference. Uh, engineer from training. I've been in the 4x4 Challenges world for about 12 years, and I decided uh, it's time to change to something a little bit more comfortable. So we decided to give the more cars a, a go. We chose a quite nice little Merc, the 190E. We just got a superb suspension. So for the start off, it's a reliable car and uh, we'll see what, what happens today. The Mark cars is something, it's quite affordable to get into the racing in that, that game. And uh, you don't have to modify too much on the car because then you sit down with spanners and everything every morning before a race, fixing cars and those sort of things. This is much more relaxing. Our car broke at Swat Cops. Um, fortunately at Swat Cops, Wayne let me have a ride on his car, so I still get to do the laps. It was a bit of a short gap between this race and Swat Cup, so uh, I've come up with my nephew Grant. Grant's going to race the saloons race, and the Mark cars very kindly offered the saloon guys to drive with them. So we're going to give it a go. I went out this morning, and it's a lot of fun. I can't, I can't not come here. It's probably one of my favourite tracks, so you've got to always come here. The town is chilled. Um, the track is, was an awesome track to drive. Um, it's challenging. Um, it's just nice. I don't know. We just like it. It's so chilled here. Nick Van Vaken is Mercedes-Benz 350 SE will be the first car to leave the starting blocks and he will be the car the rest of the field are aiming to catch and pass. 43 seconds later, Michiel Oberholzer will set off after Van Vaken. As their time shows up on the clock, the drivers push the accelerator pedal down and begin the chase round this 4.24 kilometer circuit. Nick van Vaken, his Mercedes-Benz is gradually being caught by the faster cars who are unlapping themselves at this stage of the race. It's Ian Morgan who passes him coming into turn three and leads the way to the boot. Down the back straight, Steve Trutter is being passed by a duo of Mercedes-Benz. Stuart Grant in his lone car leads Ian Morgan into turn nine. Morgan started five seconds behind Grant, so he will be hoping to find a way past the white Mercedes soon. 
Through the series of right-handers, Grant looks to be extending the gap to Morgan, and he leads him through Heels Corp. Rob Van Aal in the blue Ford Escort is passed by the Mercedes 190E of Michiel Uberholzer at the end of the back straight. Uberholzer with a 4x4 background, still getting used to track conditions, but doing remarkably well. Saying that, and Nick Van Veek has a brief off-road excursion before rejoining the track. He's coming under pressure from Uberholzer, who after passing Rob Van Aal, is now closing in on the Mercedes. Coming into the final turn, and Uberholzer is pushing hard, looking for a way past the Mercedes. He doesn't seem to be close enough just yet. Racing into the boot, and he has made up enough ground. Uberholzer has the inside line and powers past Van Veek. Van Veek is left to watch as the 190E accelerates away. Bert Van Aal in his Ford Capri, meanwhile, is catching up to his brother Rob in the Escort. Rob, feeling the pressure from the Capri, runs slightly wide on the exit of Heels Corp and hands Bert an easy opportunity to close in and potentially pass him. Into the final bend, and Rob is still ahead. Onto the main straight, and Bert Van Aal challenges. Side by side, they run. The Escort still marginally ahead of the Capri. Wheel to wheel, the brothers run into turn one. The superior power of the Capri eventually allowing Bert to edge ahead of the Escort. Sibling rivalry at its best. Next target to pass for Bert Van Aal is Nick Van Veek. Through Castle Corner, and Van Aal takes the inside line and chases hard. The Mercedes managing to run alongside the Capri as they power through turn six and on to the Uncinis. The yellow Capri managing to eke out a slight advantage over the Mercedes through Uncini one. Down the back straight and Van Veek comes back at Van Aal. The Mercedes with the inside line coming into turn nine and pushing home the advantage. Van Aal now has to do it all again. Through the right-handers, the pair run and into Heels Corp. Neither Van Veek or Van Aal willing to give an inch. Coming into the final corner and Van Aal has found a way past with brother Rob, now having a look as well. The checkered flag is out and it's Michiel Uberholzer who crossed the finish line first. Bert Van Aal crosses in second place, with Nick Van Veek coming over in third. Rob Van Aal right on his tail in fourth. Unfortunately, this is handicap racing, and you have to stick within a certain time. If you go faster, you break out and are disqualified. Despite their best efforts, the top three drivers all broke out, so this gave the win to Rob Van Aal, with Stuart Grant taking second place and Jose Vasquez in third. It was excellent. I really had lots of fun. Uh, it's all new to me, standing in the grid, starting off, waiting for your time to go 42 minutes and you have seconds and you have to go. So yeah, got on with it. Uh, so after a couple of laps, oh, this guy with a little escort in front of me is starting to hold me back. Gave him a lap or so and then went for it. Eventually catch up to, to Nick in front as well. Got past him. Well, I, apparently I broke out or something, whatever that means. So I'm not getting any points, but I came out first. So. That was a hell of a lot of fun. Lovely, I enjoyed it. My first time out here. Uh, first time out with semi slicks as well. Hot. I uh, thought semis are corner well, but uh, they get warm as well. And it also starts slipping and sliding. I battled to get past Nick for a couple of times. Uh, I did get past him down the back straight. And Merck has just got the legs on me and he overtook me again. And I had to overtake him again right towards the end. So I got him on the last corner before the on the last lap. So yeah, it was great fun. My two friends here, uh, although they finished the line, I went over the line before me, but they bro both broke out and I happened to come first, so I'm very happy about that. And uh, yeah, thanks to my new sponsors, Ace Auto, Ace Auto Salvage. Thank you, guys. The field of cars are lined up and under starter's orders. The flag is waved and Nick van Veek sets off. 28 seconds later and Rob van Aal will begin his chase. Jose Vasquez leads Stuart Grant down the back straight and into turn nine. Grant makes his move down the inside and passes the silver Mercedes. The two cars fairly evenly matched, handicapped just five seconds apart. Michiel Uberholzer is pushing hard and catching up to the blue escort of Rob Van Aal. The escort started 24 seconds ahead of the Mercedes. 
As they come down the back straight, that advantage has disappeared and the pair run side by side down the 412 meter back straight. Into turn 9 and Oberholzer has taken the position from the escort and moves ahead. The yellow Ford Capri with Bert Van Aal at the wheel accelerates its way towards the Uncinis. Pushing hard on the inside of the Capri is Ray Cornelison in his red Alfa Romeo GTV. For now, fending off Cornelison for now, but the Alfa will not be giving up. Onto the back straight now, the Alfa follows the Capri. Cornelison pulls alongside Fanal down the straight and into turn nine, moves ahead. Stuart Grant leaning his Mercedes through turn three. Jose Vasquez behind him tries to do the same thing, but it all ends up going a bit wrong for Vasquez as he is off onto the gravel doing a bit of farming. He rejoins the track, but he has lost a lot of ground. Through turn nine, and Bert Van sees brother Rob in front of him go slightly wide off into the gravel. Rob Van rejoins the track, having lost a fair amount of ground to his brother. Through Hills Corp they go, the Capri pushing hard, trying to capitalize on the error of the escort. Into the final corner, and the chase is on, but Rob Van is still in the front for now. After his off a turn three, it looks like Jose Vasquez has had to retire his Mercedes. Onto the main straight, Bert Van is pushing hard, trying to get ahead of his brother. As they run into turn one, Stuart Grant has also joined the battle, and he has a look down the outside of the Capri. Through the long corner they go, and Rob Van comes out ahead of Bert Van with Stuart Grant not able to make the pass on the Capri. Under the bridge and through turn two, Bert Van sees the Mercedes slide past him and alongside the escort before moving ahead of the pair. into turn three and the Mercedes has managed to pull ahead of the Escort who is now doing its utmost to stay ahead of the Capri. The Capri having to follow the Escort for now. Powering their way towards the boot, the Capri lines itself up to take a look down the inside of the Escort. Into the boot, on the inside and the yellow Capri is past the blue Escort. Great racing between the brothers as they head on to Castle Corner. Stuart Grant has got it pinned coming into the Uncinis and he flies past Nick van Veek. Down the main straight into turn one and Bert van Aal is coming up on Nick van Veek. Through the big 120 degree left hander they go. Van Aal makes his move as they straighten up and the Capri moves ahead of the Mercedes. Nick van Veek follows the yellow Ford Capri through turn two and on to turn three. Rob Van Aal a fair distance behind the pair. Through turn six and Stuart Grant makes short work of Raycord Ellison in his Alpha GTV as the Mercedes moves ahead and shows him the way to the Oncinis. Cornelison will be pushing hard and looking for any way back past the Mercedes. Coming up to the final bend and it's Stuart Grant and his Mercedes who has managed to stay ahead of Ray Ellison in his Alpha GTV. Grant takes the chequered flag and victory in race two of the Marcars. Ray Ellison comes home in second place just under three seconds behind him. Further down the field, Nick van Veek in his Mercedes is managing to hold Rob van Aal in his Ford Escort at bay as the pair round the final bend. Nick van Veek takes fifth place, half a second ahead of Rob van Aal. Confirmation of the results and it's Stuart Grant who takes the win and overall victory on the day. Ray Cornelison takes second place and he's currently leading the championship. Bert van Aal lies second in the championship, five points adrift with Rob van Aal just two points behind him. It will go down to the wire in the final round. Yeah, it was brilliant. That was really hot though. It was cooking, but... Uh... I think I got off four seconds behind Jose, managed to catch him, and then we had a lack of dice, and uh, I think he let me pass because he made it a little bit easy, and then he followed me, and he went off wide down the bottom, and that was sort of the last I saw him. It was really good fun. Eh? I jumped up to about second in, in race one after the first four guys were disqualified. So, yeah, I think if I haven't broken out now, I might be in the points. Yes, no, that was very exciting, you know, trying to, to stay with the Stuart now in this last race. That was, I felt, I felt about 10 years younger. Yes. That was very nice. I enjoyed it very much. I went off and then the, the tire, piece of the tire came off and uh, so that tire is ruined. So I, I didn't finish it, but, uh, but it was, it was great. Join us after the break when the Sabat Lotus Challenge take to the track.